That's what it sounded like Sunday when cantor Daniel Ben Lolo of Montreal's Spanish and Portuguese synagogue chanted the Hashkava memorial prayer. It was an online ceremony for the victims of the Farhud. They're marking the 80th anniversary of the Farhud this week, June 1st and 2nd. The Farhud was a two-day-long pogrom against the Jewish community of Iraq in the spring of 1941, right on the holiday of Shavuot. Pro-Nazi rioters killed hundreds of Jews in Baghdad and destroyed 900 Jewish homes and businesses. Eventually, several hundred thousand Farhud survivors moved to Israel, and about 500 families made their way later to Canada. I don't want to compare it to the, to the Holocaust, but we had our own uh, suffering. I'm Ellen Besner, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like for Tuesday, June 1st, 2021. Welcome to the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. The Farhud was a turning point in the fate of Iraq's 2,000-year-old Jewish community. Zionism was later declared a crime, Jews were turfed from government jobs, and within a few years after the end of the Second World War and the founding of the State of Israel in 1948, Iraq decided to let their Jews leave. But those who did were stripped of their citizenship and all their assets. Some were smuggled out. About 130,000 others came to Israel via airlifts called Operation Ezra and Nehemia. Today, there are only about three or four Jews left in Baghdad. Coming up, you'll meet two Canadians who lived through the Farhud as young boys. But first, here's what's making news in Canada right now. Reaction is still coming in from Canadian Jewish leaders to a letter signed by 24 Canadian members of Parliament and two senators, mostly Liberals. The letter was released after the recent ceasefire in the fighting between Israel and Hamas and the calming of violence on the West Bank. The politicians who signed include Leah Gazan, the NDP member for Winnipeg Centre, who is of Jewish heritage. The letter calls on Canada to condemn Israel for illegal settlements, displacement of Palestinians, and breaking the Geneva Convention, among other things. Conservative Senator Linda Frum and the PC candidate in Thornhill, Ontario, Melissa Lansman, tweeted their critiques of the letter. A prominent Jewish doctor from Winnipeg, Ted Lyons, is the honoree for the Jewish National Fund's Negev Dinner for Manitoba and Saskatchewan. The event was postponed from last year due to COVID and was set to go live via YouTube Monday night. All the proceeds from the event are going towards building a multi-million dollar new Canada House project in Sterot, Israel. The area was hard hit by rockets from Gaza in the recent conflict. The center will offer programming to local high school students who need a leg up to succeed in the army or their future education. Probably the most famous Canadian survivor of the Iraqi Farhud against the Jews of Baghdad is Naim Katan. The 92-year-old novelist has written 30 books. He came to Canada in 1954. Katan was a little older than my next guest, Joe Samuels, who was born in 1930 in the Takdel Takia neighborhood of Baghdad. He was ten and a half when the Farhud happened. His family barricaded themselves in their house all night, staying on the roof, praying and crying, until Iraqi troops entered the lawless city and stopped the raping and looting and killing of Jews. He stayed in Iraq until he was finished high school, but by then it was becoming increasingly dangerous for Jewish people. Samuels and one of his brothers were smuggled out of the country via Iran, and they made their way to Israel. Eventually, he moved to Montreal. Joe Samuels now lives in California, where he's a sought-after speaker and has a new book out about the Farhud. Probably the story of the Farhud is not well known, but this year is a very important anniversary. Well, the, the history of the Jews in Arab land is not well known. I mean, it, I don't want to compare it to the, to the Holocaust, but we had our own uh, suffering and our own treatment. Our life, thank God, during the war was better, uh, but uh, we had our own, what do you call, crystal nacht or the difference. The Farhud was a major event that really uh, awoke the, the, the Jews in, in Iraq that, you know, at best, we were looked at as strangers and worst, we looked as traitors. So what is there left besides the few Jews? There's a lot of patrimony. There's a lot of cultural spaces um, that uh, is still left. Um, What is happening with them? Well, regretfully, 
nobody knows. I mean, uh, I don't think any Jews want to dare to go and visit, but uh, the latest I know uh, that Ilan Carr, who, who uh, was appointed to be uh, at the time when uh, President Trump to fight anti-Semitism, he, I knew him at the time when he was, he was on the reserve, the American reserve. So during the war of 203, he was drafted to go back to Iraq. And he took pictures about the hundreds of the Sefer Torah sitting in the basement of some building there. And uh, unfortunately, I, there's no any direct connection of what to do with this, the, the, the properties that was held by the Jewish community or that's what's happening there. Well, it was all confiscated over the years, including your own family's property. Oh, yes. We left. Everything is gone. You know, everything. I don't have anything. How to prove my property, my families, my family left like all of them, you know, left, we left all the assets and we I'm lucky to be alive and out of Iraq. There is the question of the, the Torah scrolls, the patrimony that the Americans uh, have taken to preserve them. You've written that you don't think they should be returned to the uh, Iraqi uh, authorities. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's regretfully because I feel this is part of our culture. You know, this is the only thing that we have outside the Arab world that we can feel, touch, and see. Uh, I feel very, very strongly that these artifacts, the Iraqi artifacts, not only for Iraqi Jews, but all the Arab, Arab Jews, Arab Jews that lived in Arab countries, uh, it should be part of our culture and sh definitely should stay here. Uh, here, whatever, in America or Israel, whatever. Why did you think it was important at your age to write your book? So my book, which I wrote called Beyond the Rivers of Babylon, the purpose of it is I want my fellows that I grew up with, the Arab, and there was plenty of good people and nice people in, in the Muslim and the Arab world. And to look at it and read it, said, oh, Here's a guy that lived like us and look where he is and look where we are. So I hope that when, when, when somebody reads the book, realizes that we can control the, and we can't control the un uncontrollable event, but only we can behave and manage ourselves with what we have. Montrealer Sami Sarani was five or six years old when he survived the Farhud. An uncle and a cousin did not. Sorani also fled to Israel and eventually came to Canada. He's been documenting the actual numbers of the victims of the Farhud and helping to document some of the names of Jews buried in Baghdad's ancient Jewish cemetery, which the government bulldozed over in 1958 to build a road. The old cemetery contained a mass grave of the Farhud victims, and that's gone. Sorani says the government erased evidence of the genocide of his people. The number 180, about 180, was rather cooked. Why? I can refer you to a document from the uh, British uh, Foreign Affairs, where you can read that the estimate of the British High Commissioner in Baghdad was about 1,000 a day. So the 180, that doesn't include those who went on the river to pray because it was... Uh, uh, the Jewish festival, they hit them on the head, throw them in the river. There was no trace of their bodies. Families were disappeared totally. And those people who were uh, a bit, let us say, injured, they took them to the hospital. In the hospital, they treat them mostly in a bad way and they died. Those are not included in that mass grave. <laughs> And that's what Jewish Canada sounds like for this episode of the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. Integrity, community, quality, and customer care. Why not drop me a note? Let me know what you think of the podcast so far. I'm at ebesner at thecjn.ca. And you can also find me on Facebook and Twitter. We'll close the episode with the words of Montreal's Etta Yudin. She's the vice president of CJA, the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs in Quebec. Her grandfather and mother survived the Farhoud. Personally, as, as a daughter of an Iraqi Jew, my grandfather 
was a member of the Ottoman Parliament and legal advisor to the Minister of Finance in Iraq. This story is so much more than one of the issues that I deal with. Um, and I think as the next generation, as someone who wasn't born in Iraq, but who has those roots, it, it's incumbent upon us and every single one of us to do what we have to do to make sure that the world does not ignore what happened, that the world remembers our story 